hello guys so welcome back to this channel so in this particular tutorial we are going to be looking at how to capture image from our camera so this is actually one of the features you really want to know how to implement because most of the time you might want to build an app that will require the user to snap an image from the camera so we're going to be looking at how to create it just shortly so if this is your first time to drop in by this channel please do well to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification button so that you can always get notified whenever i make this kind of video so without wasting much time let's jump right into it so we are not going to be focusing on the ui at all so i'm going to just go ahead and create a new project which i'm very certain you already know how to do so i'm going to just call this project Xamarin camera okay so this will be a blank app so our project has been created successfully and i'm gonna go to my main layout which i can find in my resources so this is my main layout i'm going to load it up okay so our layout is fully loaded so what we're gonna be having here will be an image view and a button so when we click on the button it will load up our camera and when we take a snapshot it will preload in the image view that we have in this particular layout so guys let's go ahead and make our design so i'm going to first change this to linear layout now i'm going to add an image view so now that our image view is ready the next thing we need to do will be to set a dummy image just to let us know exactly where our image view is located so to do that i'm going to have to add an image to our resources i'm going to add it to our drawable folder unfortunately visual studio 2017 doesn't predefined drawable folder for us so we're gonna have to create that manually so i'm gonna name this folder drawable so we're gonna go ahead and add our dummy image to this particular folder so this should be an existing item so i have it in my documents okay so that that's the image you're going to be using i'm gonna have to rename it to icon okay i'm gonna say Android or SRC. Okay, so now we have the image view well set up. It's actually not showing here for now. So we missed setting the orientation for our linear layout. So we're gonna go ahead and add that saying Android orientation. We're gonna send the orientation of our linear layout to be vertical. Okay, so our image view is somewhere around here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase increase the width and height of my image view okay boom so we can see that here don't worry about the icon it will show up when we run the app so now the next thing we need to do will be to set our button so we're gonna go ahead and define a new button okay so we have our button so the idea of our button is capture button the height is 40 dp the width is 200 dp and it is actually in the middle of our layout because we set the layer gravity to be center horizontal and the test is capture image so and we set a margin of 10 dp as you can see this space from here to the image view so that's why we had the margin so now that we have our design ready let's go to our main activity .cs, and finish up with the functionality all right so the first thing we need to do will be to reference our view so i'm going to define an instance of our button and i'm going to define a new image view okay so now that we've defined that let's go ahead and reference these instances to the one that we have in our activity the main xml so i'm going to say capture button will be equal to so we're going to i'm going to go ahead and type this out okay so we're going to do the same thing for this image view. Boom. So now that we have the capture button and this image view reference, I'm going to go ahead and add click event handler to our capture button. So I'm going to say capture button dot click plus equal to and tab. So this is our click event handler. So now the next thing we need to do will be to implement the functionality proper. So there is actually different methods that we can use to capture image from our camera but i'm going to be using the most reliable method which so far i've been able to discover so to be able to do that we're gonna have to install a new nugget package 
So this nugget package helps us to compress the image. You know, after taking the image, you can decide to compress it to a lower quality. So this nugget package helps us to manage all of that. So I'm going to click on manage nugget package. Now I'm going to search for xam.plugin.media. Okay. So this is the plugin we are looking for. Exactly this. So I'm going to go ahead and click install. Our installation was successful. Now there's a lot of steps or there's a lot of things we need to do first of all to be able to make use of this particular nugget package effectively. So the first thing we need to do will be to copy this code. We have to add this permissions code to our main activity. So I'm going to go ahead copy this. I'm going to go to our main activity and I'm going to paste this here. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the readme test again. So it asks us to add permission to write external and read external storage. So we're going to go to our Android manifest and add that. Okay, so we're going to click on manifest. Okay, so we're going to look for read and write external storage. So this is read external story. I'm going to tick this. I'm going to scroll down. So this is write external storage. I'm going to take this. Boom. So we're going to go back to the readme test. So what's the next thing it asked us to do? So the next instruction we have here will be to add the following to your Android manifest inside the application tags. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. So all we just need to do will be to follow the instruction in this readme test step by step. At the end of the day, we'll be able to implement our capture feature successfully. So I'm going to load up my Android XML manifest sml rather so this is the application tag i'm going to have to scroll to the end i'm going to expand it and i'm going to paste the code here just the way the readme test suggested us to do so after we've done that the next thing will be to add a new folder called xml into your resource folder and add an xml file called filepath.xml so there is actually a lot of steps to using this but I can promise you that it's really worth it. So we're going to go ahead and create a new folder in our resources folder. So we're going to call this folder XML. So inside of the XML, we're going to create a new file, a new XML file. Okay, so we're going to call this file parts. So now that we have that ready, we're going to go back to our readme test and copy this I'm gonna go ahead and save this so this is all we need to do here now we're gonna go back to our main activity so if you are making use of newer versions of Android you know that on runtime you have to request for permissions right so we're gonna go ahead and request for permissions so these permissions we've already have declared them in our Android manifest but because of changes in how Android system works Recent devices require that you request these permissions on runtime. So this is actually very straightforward as well. So we're going to go ahead and say read only string. This is going to be an array. I'm going to call this permission group. And it's going to be equal to. Okay, I'm going to say manifest. So we're going to try to resolve manifest. So we're going to say manifest the permission the read external storage. So this is the first one. Now the next one will be to write external storage. And lastly will be the camera. Okay, so now that we have that, so we're going to come to our uncreate method. I'm going to say request permission. And I'm going to pass it my string array that we just defined here. That's the permission group. And I'm going to pass it a request code. I'm going to just go ahead and put zero. So we've successfully completed the first stage of this whole process, which is to request for runtime permissions. So the next thing we need to do will be to capture the image. And we're going to be making use of the new Nugget package that we just installed. So to ensure that everything is clean, I'm going to have to create a new, a new method. This method is going to be as recruiters. So I'm going to say await cross media. I'm going to try to resolve this. So this cross media is actually coming from the Nugget package that we installed earlier on. 
I'm going to say closed media dot current dot initialize. So this will initialize the package. Now the next thing will be to go ahead and capture our image. So I'm going to say var file will be equal to await cross media dot current dot take photo async. Okay, so this will capture our image. Now here we're going to go ahead and set some attributes that we'll need our image to have. So firstly, I'm going to set the size. Now the next thing will be to set the compress quality. You can set it to any value you like. I like 40%. So I'm going to just go ahead and set it to 40. So I can go ahead and set the name of the image. If I want to set the name, if I so desire, I can just go ahead and say name equals to my image dot jpg this for instance if i want to save it in a special directory i could do that as well i could just call the directory call the directory say sample so this is all we need to do so this file will be an instance of the picture that we just captured for our camera so the next thing we need to do will be to check if we really captured an image i'm going to say if file is equal to null so I'm going to just go ahead and say return. So this will check if we really captured an image. So once our image was successfully captured, the next thing we need to do will be to set it to our image view. All right. We first of all need to convert this file to a byte array. Then we can now set it as a bitmap to our image view. So a lot of the talks. So I'm going to just go ahead and comment this. So this is what we're actually going to be doing. So I'm going to say byte array. I'm going to call it image array. This will be equal to system.io.file.readallbytes. I'm going to pass it file.part. Now, the next thing I'm going to say will be bitmap. So, we're going to have to resolve this. This will be equal to, this will be equal to bitmap factory decode byte array. I'm going to pass it our image array and we're going to set this to zero and this we're going to set it to image array dot length and finally i'm going to say and finally i'm going to say this image this image view rather dot set bitmap and i'm going to pass it our bitmap boom and finally we're going to go ahead and call this stick photo method in our capture button event click handler I'm going to call take photo here. Now to ensure that everything works just the way we've planned it, we're going to go ahead and run this app. Okay, our Android application is starting. Okay, so now it's requesting for the runtime permissions. So we're going to go ahead and allow all of them. So the next thing will be to click on capture image. Boom. So this is an emulator. So obviously, you know that our images will be emulated or our camera will be emulated rather. So on a normal physical device, this would be an actual camera. So I'm going to go ahead and snap an image. Okay, so I'm going to go back. So I'm going to click this again. I'm going to take a snapshot. Okay, so this will be to retake the snapshot or this will be to close this off and this will be to actually select this image. So I'm going to go ahead and select this image. Boom. As you can see, the image is now showing up on our image view. So if you guys remember, I compressed this. So obviously the quality will be lesser than what of what we already should have been expecting. But this also comes in handy when you want to effectively manage memory in your app. So it's also very useful to know how to compress your images within your app. So let's try this again. Boom. So guys, this is exactly how to capture images from your camera in xamarin.android. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned something new. If you like this video, go ahead and give a thumbs up. And if you're yet to subscribe to the channel, please, please do well to hit the subscribe button and 
also turn on the notification bell so that you can always know whenever I make this kind of videos. So thank you guys for watching and see you soon.